Good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well and you are ready for another lecture. Today is 13th of May, 2020, and we are in the lecture of CIV 573 and CIV 673. Okay, let's get started. Now, as you see in this slide, we are today, we are going to see the waves. We saw last lecture, the wave theories. Now we focus on calculation, the wave characteristics. Wave characteristics, we see mainly here, the different forms of the Schneider formula and also the SMB equations. SMB is again Monk, uh, Zverdrop, Monk, Schneider. And you see their formula and applications. Now, this is the uh, material that I put in the use beam and you can download that. It is only for waves, just wave calculation, even a little about wave theories. Therefore, we see here the wave uh, booklet. You remember that we saw the waves, the theories, and this graph showed us the wave, for example, uh, validity for different zones of water and different water depths. Therefore, easily we can calculate which theory is applicable by having depth of water and also the height of the wave. It's all. And then we saw the progress of wave towards the shore at the deep water, then the water depth is more than half of wavelength, then D is greater than L over two, this is called deep water. And when the depth of water is shallower than L over two, we call that mm, transitional and then or shallow waters. Therefore, the L over two is the border between deep water and I call that non-deep water. Non-deep water consists of two zones. One is transitional water, the other shallow water. You remember that for the difference between shallow water and transitional water, it was L over 25. Therefore, we compare the water depth with L over 25. If water depth is shallow, shallower than L over 25, it is shallow water. If it is greater than that, but less than L over 2, it is uh, transitional water. And I told you, when we have deep water, there is no any contact between waves and seabed. Therefore, no sedimentation, not material transportation. And when we have transitional, and shallow waters, the wave touch the seabeds. Therefore, its acceleration, its movement, move the uh, sands on the seabeds or material on the seabeds. Therefore, we have sedimentation there. And now, after that, we saw some examples for validity of the uh, wave theories and water depths. We applied the graph of Coulomb-Motte. And then we calculated uh, different wave height together between them. You know, I told you the wave height is a spectrum. Its value, wave height, starts from zero to maximum. Therefore, we have a care for that. The distribution is not normal curve. It is Riley distribution for period, for uh, wave height. 
For period, it is normal distribution. Therefore, when you calculate it, you consider that. We saw that we have significant wave height, that is height of the average of top 30%. We have average height, we had highest 10%, wave height, the average of that, we call that H10. We have the average of highest 1%, it was H1. And highest, it was absolute value of the height. And we saw that the relation between the, these uh, heights, significant wave height, average height, average of highest 10%, average of highest 1%, and highest. And we have values 1, 0, 64, 1 1.29, 1.68, 1.87. It means that when one of them is given, we can calculate the other one by considering these ratios. We saw one example here, last lecture, and we entered to the Schneider formula or Schneider equation. For, by applying the Schneider formula, By applying the Schneider formula, we calculate the wave characteristics that mainly they are wave height, wave period, showing by H and T, and water depth, and condition for different fetch length, which, which is abbreviated by F, and we saw that one. Sometimes, in some books, instead of T, period, they write L, which is wave length. Doesn't matter. They can, if you have L, you can calculate T. If you have T, you can calculate L. Therefore, you remember, we saw this one. But a very fast review on that. For calculating H and T, period and wave height, we should have the U10. What is U10? U10 is the wave, the wind velocity 10 meters above sea level. Why 10? I told you because normally the ships has the instrument to measure the wave uh, height, uh, wave velocity, wind velocity. Therefore, for that one, we have U10. When we have U10, we calculate U by applying the value of RT that we found from the graph that is given by this U, etc. We'll see. I right? will show you again. When we calculated U, we apply in UA. UA is the wind stress function. We calculate. And by applying the UA calculation, when we found UA, we apply that in British Schneider formula. Therefore, if you review the velocity of wind, the velocity of wind is measured at a level 10 meter above the sea level. We call that U10. When we have U10, we can calculate U by multiplying U10 by a factor RT. RT depends on the difference between temperature of the seawater and air. This uh, for example, has a significant role to ca in calculation of H and T. In SMB formula, which is a little older, older than British Schneider formula, we don't have such a thing. So we don't consider that one the temperature and uh, between the difference between the temperature of the water and air. 
And my experience when I calculated based on that for some cases for Caspian Sea, for Persian Gulf, I saw that this factor is very important and affects, an, I can say, a lot. Therefore, the history of <coughs> uh, wind velocity, now we finish that. Let's go to the next slide. In this slide, you can see one equations given by Dr. Schneider that from this one we calculate H. H is the wave. Normally it is it depends. If your fetch is related to a fetch of uh, wind of highest or lowest, it depends on that. You can find HS, H10, everything. Depends on the F and velocity. What is the period of that wind coming? It's 100 years once, one year once came, and therefore you have H, and you can go to the spectrum. Therefore here, just input is UA, D, water depth, G, gravitational acceleration, and F, the fetch length. By uh, applying, implementing these parameters as input, we can find H as output. Don't forget, here we have tan hyperbolic, tan H, tan H. It's not normal tangent, it's tangent hyperbolic. Therefore, when you apply the uh, calculator, pay attention. We have tan and we have tan h, tangent hyperbolic. You should put, put tangent hyperbolic. Because we have tan sine cosine normal, we have tan hyperbolic, sine hyperbolic, and cosine hyperbolic. They are linked to each other by e, Neperian number, e power x. And you will see in the mathematics, I am sure of that you have seen. From the second formula, similar to the first one, we see the period. And we can calculate the period of wave. Again, input for this formula, the parameters are the parameters of D, water depth, UA, wind stress function, G, gravitational acceleration, and F. When these are input, output is T, time, this period of wave. When we have in formula D, it means that the water depth affects on the wave. It means that it is deep water or transitional water. This formula is not for deep water. Otherwise, you didn't see the role of D there. Therefore, this formula is for, I can call that non-deep water, which consists of transitional water and also shallow waters. We have eight students at lecture. They are very nice now. Now, okay, you saw that we have period of wave, it was T capital. We had T lowercase, as small as well. What is this? This is the duration of blowing the wave, wind, wind. For example, if we have 24 hours, the mm, duration for Blowing wind, T is that. Why we need that? You know, fetch depends on the distance between two shorelines. If the distance between two shorelines is too much, perhaps the duration of wind governs. We have a, a small fetch length. We have one hour, for example, wind. This time from one shore to the other shore, if the winds comes go there, takes, for example, I don't know, two days, three days. 
Therefore, that time the wind duration covered. Give less wave height. We calculate two cases. The one we apply fetch, we find one, for example, H or T. And then again, we apply T here. We see if we consider that T, what is the wave duration? We can calculate T, the wind duration from here. This is the graph that from this one we find the factor RT. Factor RT actually is a factor which considers the difference between A and C temperature we call difference between TA and TS in centigrade degrees, which is given in 1977 by Rezio and Vincent, or Vincent, French Vincent, English Vincent. I showed you how you apply that. You calculate TA minus TS, go up horizontally and when you arrive to the curve, you go to the left and find the value of RT from left, from the vertical axis. And apply in the formula when you were calculating, you remember U, when you had U10 and you wanted to calculate U. And then continue to calculate UA. The first part that we saw, it, it was related to uh, non-deep waters or shallow or transitional water when the wave feels, when the wave feels the seabed, when the water depth is less than L over two wavelengths over two but here we see for deep waters the formula for deep waters therefore pretty schneider equations for prediction of a spectral wave height that we show that by h m o and peak a spectral period which we show that by Tm, as well as the duration of wind, which we show by T, lower case of the letter T. For a limited fetch length, it means that's offshore, but limited fetch length. Either the duration of wind is low or the Fetch length is low or it's between two shorelines, but there is deep. You imagine there is between two mountains, something like that, depends. And that is for deep water condition. Uh, if you see the equations at a glance, you see that this is for, for example, deep water. Why? You cannot see any D there. There's not water depth here. The role of water depth is zero here. It means that the wave will not touch the seabed. From here, by inserting, implementing the value of fetch length, UA, and the gravitational acceleration, we find HMO, which is spectral wave height which has a relation with this one and we can say H max, either N and C. And TM and T, they, have, uh, they are related by a very uh, a factor near to one, which is 0 0.95 most probably. For the second formula, we calculate <coughs> TM and from the last one, we calculate wind duration. You see that 
When we calculate beam duration, T, lower case, we implement F. But in previous case, when we had none deep water, we implement T capital period and we found T small or wind duration. A third case <coughs> when the wave is developed completely it happens mostly at the end zones of the fetch plane or fetch zone at the beginnings there are for example some seas and then it converts to swells at the end it is developed wave you see that here directly you can find HMO by uh, implementing or putting as input just wind stress function UA, nothing else. For finding TM the same, and also for finding wind duration T similar to that one. Now, as I explained you, and I am repeating it here, that is important. This is a graph that we saw different cases implemented in that. You see that this is wave height when the condition of the water depth is constant. It means that it's for non deep water. Why? Because in the formula you see water depth D. And also it says that when you say constant water depth. It is for non-deep water. Otherwise, it was not important that the water depth is constant or not, because the wave that in that case would not touch the seabed. But in here, the wave touches the seabed. You see the formula is given again. The top one is written for shallow waters, wave heights, that when say shallow water, here it means non-deep water. Shallow water when says it consists of shallow water and transitional water. And you see that in the left at top, it's hidden for fully, fully developed seas. So we gave the formula. In the other one, you see GH over 1.6. You have sold all of these categories in the formulas that we had. Therefore, if you consider this one, H, G, H over U, A squared, the top one, equals 2.83 times 10 minus 3. Let me show you value from that. Had this one for non deep water. This was the first equation. And the other one, when at top but at right, is written fully below C, it shows GH over UA squared equals 2.43 times 10 minus. Three is for this condition. Fully developed 2.433 times 10 minus 1. Therefore, for the other cases that we have here, deep water and 
HMO comes from the formula G HMO over U A square equals 1.6 times 10 minus 3 and etc. Remember 1.6 10 minus 3. We can see it in the formula in the graph formula given graph at the bottom and not at bottom at the middle h u over u a square equals 1.6 times 10 minus 3 and a square root of g h over u a square and it's a line Why a straight line is written on the straight line deep water bay? Why is a straight actually not should be very straight because h is a function of a square root of h f in the horizontal in the horizontal Access we have gh, gf over u a square, it means it is related to f, which length. In the vertical axis, it is gh over u a square, it means it depends on height, the height. Therefore, the equation should be actually not very. Uh, straight as shown. Why? Because the scale of vertical and horizontal axis is logarithmic. But here it is a square root of one that. How do you find a linear? If you get logarithm from both sides of the equation, you see that time that log h is a function of 1 over 2 times the factor log f. Therefore, when we go to the logarithmic scale, the relation between h and f is linear. Therefore, it should be a line. I hope you get my point. Direct formula, when you see h and f, should not be a line. When you get Logarithm from both sides of the equation, that is, for example, log n and the others, the other size is 1 over 2 times 1 factor and then log f and the others. Therefore, when we have logarithmic equation, the relation between h and f is linear. Therefore, we have a line. Because of that, on the line is written this one way. Therefore, deep water wave line makes the graph in two categories. One, deep water, and the other, then we have non-deep water. That it consists of shallow and transitional water. From next slide, we have the same things, but the difference here we calculate T wave period. The first one in the previous slide it was H wave height. But this graph too is showing the wave period T. Therefore, again you see we apply the same formula. Top one is for shallow water. On the line it is for deep water and border between deep water. We have fully developed formula and the others. And we have a line that shows GT over UA equals something that shows maximum wave period. You can find H and T from the graph or formula, but I think you prefer apply formula if no mistake in calculation is easier. In this graph, in this graph, we see wave height and wave period. Both of them you can find from here. 
What is the input? Input is in the horizontal axis, which is fetch, fetch length. The unit that you should apply is kilometers. In the vertical axis, you see that being a stress function, UA, that the unit of that is meter per second. Therefore, input is in vertical axis, UA, and in horizontal axis, fetch length. When you have this to input, why, if you have UA horizontally, you sketch a line. When you have fetch vertically, you sketch the line. Intersection of these two lines is your answer, is your response. At that point, you see what is written on the, the curves. Two groups of curves we have. One is related to significant wave height, which is by full line, solid line. Again, there is another peak spectral period that is by solid line, but, but the unit of the first one was meter, the unit of peak spectral period is second. For the significant height is written the unit meter and for the other seconds. Therefore, if you read, for example, 1.25 1 1 meters, it is clearly significant wave height. If you see it is written, for example, 5.2 S second is clear, that belongs to wave peak spectral period. And there is another dash line curves, these are the groups of curves, that is shows the minimum duration that is in hour, and some of them even in minutes. For a smaller values than one hour, that's written min, M-I-N, is abbreviation of minutes. And for the Durations more than one hour, it is written HR. Therefore, we see three parameters here. One is height, the other is wave period, and the last one is, for example, the, the minimum duration. And there is a line limits at the right, you can see one limit line is written maximum conditions fully arisen seas. Therefore, this is another one. Therefore, we have three graphs. The first two, it was belongs to wave height H and wave period T. The last one is related to both of them together. So far, we saw the formula of Bertel Schneider. Now we see the SMB formula. SMB formula is simpler, application is simpler, but the Bertel Schneider, I think, is more accurate and stuff like that. If you don't have the data related to the difference between wave, wind, uh, between sea temperature, Water, water, water sea temperature, and also the air temperature. Therefore, you can apply this one. Otherwise, it's better you even imagine and some rough estimation in summer, in winter, and calculate the Schneider values given by applying the difference between the temperature of seawater and air. It is I prefer that one. Let's review the SMB equations. Actually, SMB is famous as SMB. It is the abbreviation of Zewelrat Monk British Schneider. SMB equation for the prediction of wave characteristics, which are 
modification of Zevedrov-Mang equation in 1958 over the Brett-Schneider formula because first Brett-Schneider gave one formula and then when improved that by Zevedrov-Mang in 1958 it called SMB that time I was only three years old. I don't know, you were not born, right? <laughs> see. Therefore, <clears throat> still you see that <clears throat> the formula is young. It's something about perhaps, I don't know, about 68 years uh, ago. If I am not mistaken, let me see, 48 there, yes, 68 years ago. Therefore, in this formula, first we see for deep water condition. When you see at a glance on the formula, when there are not D in formula, it means the effect of the water depth is not influenced here, has no influence. influence. Therefore, this is for deep water. The input are F, which length, U, directly the wind velocity, not U10, not U that we had in Bill Schneider, not UA. Directly wind velocity you put here. It can be, for example, over the sea level, doesn't matter. And then you have U, you have F, you calculate H from the first equation. From the second one, by implementing the same values for F and U, you find the values for wave period T. For finding wind duration, which is T, a small T, lowercase, we had some constants where in the formula x for example you see bracket x equals e power x is abbreviations and then say ln that we have in the equation ln is logarithm Neperian logarithm and the value k a b c d are given Therefore, by implementing these ones as a constant, it wants to show, show the equation very simple. It's write k, a, b, c, d. Therefore, the input for the formula again is f and u. f is fetch length and u is wind velocity. Now, as I mentioned, I wrote here for a non-deep water condition. Non-deep water, I repeat, it consists of two conditions. Either can be transitional water, when L, when D, water depth is between L over 2 and L over 25, or shallow water, when D is lesser than L over 25. In any case, for non-deep water condition, D has a role, important role. The input for this equation for finding H, the wave height, is F U, as we had before non-deep water, over deep water, plus D the water depth and also G, gravitational acceleration. And you see the form is again, we should apply tan hyperbolic, tangent hyperbolic. Next equation that we see it is for calculation of T when we apply the SM equations or formulas. Again, the input 
in addition to F and U, fetch length and wind velocity, we should apply also the value of D, which is water depth. Now, let's see one example. First example for Brit Schneider equation. In this example, the following things are given. Using Brit Schneider equations, determine the wave height and wave period in constant water depth D. Condi for the following conditions. When U10 is given 10 meters per second, U10 was wind velocity at a level of 10 meters above the sea level. For example, when it's measured on a ship. And TA represents the air temperature over sea. And TS represents the value of water depth temperature C. D is water depth and F length. Is given 10 meter per second, TA 45 degrees of centigrade, TS 30 degrees of centigrade, and D 2.5 meters. Finally, the value of fetch length 250 kilometers. This is a logic thing. 45 may happen in summer, 30 for water in summer. In Goes, it's a little high, but we can go to 26 at least. We have no Cyprus in Cyprus. Therefore, water depth is very shallow water, it's clear. And the fetch length 250 kilometers, for example, it's about between Cyprus and Turkey. This is in this order. Minimum, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is 210 kilometers. That's the solution. For the solution, first we should calculate U by applying the value of U10 that's given here. When we form the U, we apply here in the formula of UA and we find UA. And then we go to the equation of British Schneider and apply everywhere. Therefore, the first step is to calculate TA minus TS. It is 45 minus 30, it is 15 degrees of centigrade. From graph of residue, which is given here, we find RT081. Which graph, you remember that? This graph. It is not negative TA minus TS is positive, 15. You see, 15 is something, a uh, very big value at the level of horizontal axis. Therefore, you go up and you go horizontally here, you sit down something about 81, 081. A factor less than one. Therefore, you, can, you, have, you have calculated, you have found RT, which equals 0 
uh, 81. Therefore, we calculate UA by implementing RT times U10. First, U, U and then UA. We put in the formula. We find if U was even 10 meters per second, U, U10, U was 8.1 meters per second, and UA we found 9.3 meters per second. Now we find the ratio of G D over U square, which is a dimensionless factor. Why D divided by U A square and times J G does give us a dimensionless factor of to 0 0.28. Any dimension, any unit can be used here. For the same approach, we find gf over u s square. Why we find this one? Because if you remember, gd over u s square is a value that we need to apply in the horizontal axis of the graph. And gf over u s square is needed for applying in the vertical uh, axis of the graph. Let me show you. In graph one, in the vertical, we need gh over u a square. We calculate this one, and the horizontal one we calculated gf over u a square. Therefore, we found a value of 0 0.28 for gd over u s square and for gf over u s square we found 28 times 1000 which means 28000 for h we go to graph a and in graph a we are applying From uh, we find some values gh over u a square this value we implemented d f and output is h and then we found this unitless value we can find directly the value for H, which is 0 0.55 meter. It was clear. When you have 2.5 meter water depth, the wave cannot be high. Why? Because of the breaking phenomena. If we didn't have broken phenomena, it was very high due to shoaling. But the breaking wave before receiving to this point, break some values and then is reduced. Let's see what it happens on the graph. Therefore, if you remember, what was the value? Let me check again. GD for the horizontal it was 0 0.28, for vertical it was 28,000. So for vertical it was 28,000. No, for horizontal, 
Yes, for D, what was 28,000? Let me check again. Sorry, it was in the order less. For D was a smaller, for H was greater. Is this right? I think it's inverse. We should check that. Here, we have something 2.8 comes there. Then for the fetch length, we go here and find the value inside GH here. Sorry, 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 sorry. GD, you see here, GD is was input and GF was input on the horizontal input and on the curve it was input that is GD over U square. In the vertical is output, GH over U square is output. Therefore you apply GD, it was something small, 0 0.28, something here. Therefore you follow this curve about, something like that. You know, for each curve, they have one value over that. This value, this value, this value. These are all related to G. D over U A square. So with this input, you find one graph, one curve, this one or this one. Actually, something between 0, 2 and 0, 3. You find another curve, you can sketch that, for example, by another color, blue or with, for example, green or for or by red and find that. Therefore you have this. And then from horizontal it was twenty eight thousand. This is one thousand. It's logarithmic scale. Twenty eight thousand is something here. Therefore from here go up, 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 up and touch the curve. Something here. And horizontally, you go in the other side, you find something here. And you see that this is not six. Actually, you should compare this one. This is 0 0.06. You find this one for H G over U square. Let's see if they found the same or not. Actually, we saw in the class with the student. I hope there's not mistake. I am sure not. Yes, you see the exact value that we found from graph one, it is something about 6%, 0 0.62. That's correct. By applying G, U, A, and calculating from H, you will find 0 0.55 meters. And for T, from next formula, next graph, we find G, T square, G, T over U, S square equals 3.5. And then we find by applying the values, the value of T, 3. 32 seconds. Let's check again. Please keep in mind for D we have 0 0.28. For fetch we have 28 10, uh, times 10 power 3. Therefore fetch is bigger scale because it's a meter 28 kilometers and for D, forget that. This is a factor, universe factor. It's not directly pitch or directly D. 
0.28 for D and for GF over U over F. Let's go to the figure. To the graph. This graph is for calculation of water wave period according to the Schneider formula. We have three values. The vertical one, G T U A squared is output. Is, you should find this one. Horizontal, G F over U A squared is input. We have another input. What are those? These are the, those values written on the curves. We have here a groups of curves. Therefore, according to the input that we have, first we should select one curve. It was D over GS, GT square, this one, GT square here, forget that one is something between 0, 0,3 and 0, 0. is near to 0, 0,3. Therefore, you can follow actually a little lower than this curve and go to the end. So we can go to the end. Therefore, we go a little, we sketch another curve under the zero three by interpolating between zero fifteen and zero thirty or zero point three hundred and zero point fifteen. It's very close to the curve zero point three hundred. We apply GF over U square as input. It was 2.28 times 10,000. It was something like here, 28 here. So from here we go up vertically to arrive to the, um, for example, curve. Let me check the value was correct. The value was 28 times 10 power 3 and 0. Actually, 28 is 2.8 times 10 power 4. Be careful. This is 2.8 times 10 power 4. Therefore, when we say 10 power 4 is here, is here. We, in the previous example, again, I don't know, we, perhaps we didn't pay attention to that. This is 2 times 1,000. This is 3 times 1,000. When we had 28 times 1,000, it, it means that 2.8 times 10,000. We go here, 2.8 times 10,000. 2.8 times 10,000 is something here. So from here, we go up and arrive to the curve that we sketched based on interpolation between the existing curves. So from here, we go horizontally. We arrive at a point here. Therefore, we arrive when you uh, sketch the curve, when you measure everything exactly and use your ruler for finding the points, you find exact one. But here, approximate value we found. Something between three and four times what? Times zero one. No, times one, it's not here. Because if it is in this range, 
e times 0 1 when it is in this range e times that one 1 when it is between this range e times that one by 10 therefore just it is in this range e times that to 1 Therefore, we find 3.5, I don't know, 3.4, 3.3. This is the value of GT over UA. Let's go to the example. We are here. Yes. We found this one in class the same because that time uh, the student cooperate and then measured, calculated. We found GT over U square something about 3.5. From here, we calculate, we can calculate T by applying the value of G, T, G, U A square. Therefore, we find here the factor you have as well. The factor is here. We find 3.32 seconds. Don't say that this two is very accurate. You can make it sometimes because it depends on your interpolation, depends on measure. If you calculate, it's more accurate. Therefore, British Schneider equation can be used also. This is the graph that we applied. You can use the equation as well. Which equation? The Bridge-Schneider equation. I <coughs> suggest you, you do both of them. Calculate and then check by graph. It's sure. If I read you in exam, I don't trust directly only graph, only formulation. I found from equations, the values, and then check by the graph, the order. Especially when it is logarithmic scale, you should be careful. Don't go another, take another value that is not related. You know, in the first, uh, when we found H, we didn't uh, pay attention that this is 28. It's not 2.8. Therefore, I told you 28 times 10 equals 2.8 times 10 power 4. The value that we have on graph, this one, two, three, four, between uh, zero and ten. Therefore, we should be careful that we made here 2.8 times 10 power 5, 4. Okay, I hope you understood how to apply this one. You remember we saw the linear wave theory, which is called a theory for a small amplitude wave theory, or also is called a linear wave theory. And it's proposed by A. I I told you in the practical calculation, it's 95% accurate. It means that it has only 5% error. For some part that the water depth is high, and the water depth is high and H is low, it's valid, even better than the others. We saw in the graph of Lomate. There is always some, and we had other, there were some types of air uh, or wave theory, it calls finite amplitude wave theory, that are the others, the Stokes, and the others that I mentioned. If you remember that we saw the basic equations governing the motion of wave and particles at sea, we defined one factor phi that is called velocity potential factor, and then if you get the partial equation of phi, you will find the velocity in that direction. This is in the direction of x, velocity in x. In z, 
velocity in z direction. If you apply it for y, for y direction. But in the formula, the originally it has one minus here. U equals minus. That would equal minus. That we don't care that. And you know, uh, totally phi depends on x, y, and z, and t. Why did I write here the y? Because it assumes that more wave is in two directions and distributing two directions. For <clears throat> more describing the values and also the parameters that in wave we have, we have wave celerity. What is wave celerity? We have wave length, we have wave period. They are related to each other. You know, in the, I don't know, to, in dynamic, in cinematic, we have x equals v times t. When you have constant movement, x was the distance, v was velocity times t. Very simple. c equals lt comes from there. If you imagine that c equals v, velocity, and l is x, which is length or distance, and t, period, is time. It comes from there. I can't see, actually, the apparent velocity. Why? Because when you see wave coming through you, it's not fact. Because the wave particles, they are turning about the orbits. We don't have uh, material transportation. We have energy transportation. I showed you in the profile of wave, the orbits or orbits are turning on a scale or in the, for example, non-deep water, they have a ellipsoidal shape. Therefore, if you, how you understand that, it's very easy. Next time when you go to swim, a little go deeper to the sea, a little, far from the, for example, shoreline, because their breaking wave perhaps affect you. And put one drop, color drop, I don't know, red, or for example, blue, blue is in the sea, you cannot see that, red. And you see that that red drop is turning on a circle or one, ellipsoidal pass. They, that drop does not move directly to the shoreline as you see the wave comes to you. No, when you see the waves come to you, it's the form of the surface that you can see. It's actually the transformation of the energy or it's the overall envelope for the particles that we have at sea. Therefore, you see that very clearly that red drop is turning about a circle or it's turning at a path of ellipsoidal shape if there is non-deep water. Therefore, when we say x equals vt or c equals l over t, it's not real. What is the fact that we can understand give us some indications? It's not like you, when you say, I am driving my car with a velocity of, I don't know, 150 kilometers per hour from one city to the other city. The distance is clear, the time is clear, and also the velocity is here. They are related to each other. When we don't have acceleration, when there is constant velocity. Therefore, I wanted to explain this one. Let's see what is I have written here for you. Therefore, we will now review wave celerity, length, wave length, and wave period. The speed at which a wave from propagation in terms is termed in the phase velocity or wave celerity. 
which is shown by C. Since the distance traveled by a wave during one wave period is equal to one wave length, wave celerity can be related to the wave period and length by the following equation. Yes, you can say wave travels to me, but you cannot say that the water particles travels to you. No. Wave, yes, you can see the appearance of that. But the water particle never goes directly to you. It's rotating about an orbit or orbit. Therefore, in the table shown below, water waves are classified based on the relative depth criteria. Why we say relative depth? Because we compare the water depth D that is normalized on L wavelength. You had some experience before. When I say deep water, I said when D is greater than L over 2. Or in other words, D L over 2 is less than 1 over 2. Therefore, D L over 2, we can call that relative depth, relative water depth. Therefore, in table, as you see, we, had, we have here 1, 2, 3, four columns. This table shows the classification of water waves or waves. First column give us the different condition of water depths. Deep water, transitional water, and shallow water. As I explained before to you and I described, D over L is between 1 over 2 at the border of non deep water and 1 in water and deep water up to infinity value. Because depth can be 4 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 10, no, we don't have 6 kilometers, 7 kilometers at the oceans. But L, no. Therefore, infinity is exaggerating, a very, 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 very big value. But from the border of D over L is 1 over 2, we say it starts the father. This is equal to when we say D is less uh, greater than L over 2. They are the same. For transitional, you, I told you it was 1 over 25. It's written in this table 1 over 20. It doesn't matter too much. Because between 4%, it is something about 5%. And US customary, uh, US course of engineer give us L over 25. 1 over 25 is 4%. This is wrong with that. 5% is rounded, is not 4%. Between 1 over 2, L over 2, D, and 5% of the L, or 1 over 20. This is transitional. And less than this value, from 0 to this one, this is shallow water. You see that in shallow water, when the water depth zero, normally it should not have any wave because it's broken. Breaking happens here, here also, and also in dark deep water as well. But material transportation, sedimentation, is mainly in the transitional and shallow waters. Why? Because in this condition, the seabed feels the effect of the wave. In the deep water, there is not contact between wave actions, wave effect, and 
Siget at C. Therefore, you know K and K, this is, uh, for example, the number, something that we didn't go to that here. But you can see in some classification of formula, they put K. And then it is, for example, something over 2 pi, etc. Later we see that. There was something that we concern classification now is this part. When you go to formula, it goes to, for example, something over 2 pi. If divide, for example, the value of 1 over 2 over 2 pi and consider some the equations, you see there are p here and then it's And time hyperbolic. We didn't see here in the direct formula of Schneider the tan hyperbola of KD, just we see D. But we can change a little formula, you can see KD and etc. Here, we see one uh, formula very sign formula actually is adopted more with the a theory is not adopted well with Stokes theory in the Stokes if you see the crest the positive uh, part from the sea water level this is bigger than half of the height if total from top to bottom is height in the A V or sinusoidal form, this is A A, half and half. It means amplitude here or from the mean sea level up to the toe, it is H over 2. And from mean sea level up to the crest, again it is A equals H over 2. But this is for A V or sinusoidal form or harmonic form, we say. For the strokes, especially fifth and fourth and then three and then two, from the C level and zero, Z equals zero, up to the crest is more than H over two, and here is less than H over 2. This is the difference between AD and Stokes and the others. In the formula, always we fix one coordinate. This is the center of the XY or Cartesian coordinate. This direction is the direction of the movement of the wave. It is X direction. And vertically, this is Z. It's clear at this line, that is C level, water level, or mean C level, Z is zero. It's clear at C bed, Z is negative, and what is the value? Minus D. So D is calculated from C level at mean C level. And at crest, what is Z here? Z here is, according to the A theory, it is H over 2 plus. And here at 2, Z is minus H over 2, half of the wave height. At any point, we use something like eta that you saw that we have some formula. Like any sinusoidal curve, this is, we can say, zero degrees, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And this gives us water, one wave length, from crest to crest, or from toe to the other toe. This is L. And C is in this direction, 
wave celerity, which is direction of propagation. What else I can give to you? This coordinate show you the velocity in x direction, u. The velocity in z direction is w. Which velocity? Velocity of water particles, not wave. If you wanted to say a speed of wave, or it's not doesn't exist actually, you can say celerity, which is c. I think I explained very well this one. If you have any question, you can ask me. Yes, this is very interesting. Very interesting. If you apply the formulas that is given in the table of Avery, for example, for the strokes order two, three, four, all they are the same, but they have more terms. I showed you. Let's see velocity in the first layer. And in the second layer or line, you can see acceleration. Let's see. And last one, you see theta, the phase angle of the wave related to the coordinate center. Therefore, celerity is from left to right, direction of wave propagation. And always when you are standing at the shoreline, you see that the waves are coming to you because wind directed to this side. Sometimes the wind is not directly towards you. It has one angle with you, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50. but you feel that always the this comes towards you directly. What has happened? This is one phenomena that is refraction. We see later. The seabed changed the direction of the wave. Therefore, we have different between direction of wind and direction of wave. Why? Because the effect of the seabed due to the phenomenon of refraction. Okay, let's see. When we are at the theta zero here, the orbit of the water water the orbit of water particle is like this or direction is that it moves like that here because here movement is uh, velocity is horizontal is like this the velocity is like this and at the surface we have this one if you put one red drop here the red drop comes here and circle and come back here. The red drop doesn't go here towards you. Just the water particle has an orbit circulating and turning here like this. At the surface, you have maximum velocity. At the point that we have pi over two, theta pi over two, you see here, if you see orbit equal there, here, you have one vertical velocity here. And the orbit is here, and at surface is zero. But if you consider orbit, this comes here, at this point, it's vertical. Over here is vertical. At pi or 180 degrees, the orbit again rotating like this, and you see here is air, doesn't exist here. If orbit is here, is here. If orbit is here, from, for example, crest to the throw, come back. Here from the crest, there is not water here, but it should go here. 
And at this point, it is at the lowest level, it is towards to the left. Because of that, the orbit is here and this is towards left. You see that V is negative. Why x positive is the positive direction of x, positive direction of celerity? So here is negative. Here was positive. And here was actually at the surface zero. Because here we have velocity, not here. If we continue at this point, you see again the orbit might be maximum here and minimum press to throw here actually it's downward here at the surface there is nothing again is zero and here again we are arrived to another crest for two pi is repeating of zero theta then we see again the horizontal maximum velocity toward right. Exactly this is similar or exactly the same of this one, positive and positive and repeating. Now what will happen? If you find acceleration of the water particle, you know that acceleration is the limit of velocity in function of, in terms of x. Therefore, they are perpendicular to each other. If this is horizontal, this is vertical. If this is vertical, this is horizontal. If this is horizontal, this is vertical, and so on. And here you see, for the curve you have seen, for the horizontal between shear and bending moment, one is maximum, the other is zero. Same. This is maximum positive, this is zero zero and this is zero this is maximum this is negative maximum this is zero and so on this is zero this is maximum but in negative this is maximum this is zero and so on therefore you saw that different cases even for different locations of point on a wave between two press, the velocity and acceleration. I hope you are not tired. Therefore, these are some relation between theta mu w and acceleration. This is the form of the wave profile. This is U, is similar to that, which gives us the horizontal velocity at maximum, maximum, means zero, zero, in this one. And this is W, the velocity in Z direction, vertical. When this is zero, this is max. When this is max, this is zero. When this is zero, this is mean or in absolute value max, for example. Mean or max, absolute value, this is zero. Again, zero max. This are has 90 degree phase angle with, with each other. Now this, let's see the relation between acceleration in x direction and also velocity in x direction. Similar to that, when velocity in x direction is zero, acceleration is maximum. And when it's maximum, it is zero. You see that vertical velocity shape is like horizontal acceleration shape. Mean, mean, max, 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 zero, zero. And the horizontal velocity shape looks like the shape of wave profile that we can see at surface. And also acceleration in vertical direction, Z, 
you see that is opposite of that uh, horizontal one. Maximum, zero, zero, maximum, etc., minimum. So what is shown graphically, the relation between surface water, sea water profile, velocity, horizontal velocity of water particle, vertical velocity of water particle, horizontal acceleration of horizontal horizontal acceleration of water particle and vertical acceleration of water particles. So for this graph shows profiles of particle velocities and acceleration by airy theory in relation to the surface elevation. The first one was steadily elevation. Crest, flow, and etc. Yes, this is a table that gives all the parameters using or applying the Airy theory. Why Airy theory? Because as I mentioned for you, each parameter like wave profile, it has just one term. It's not plus something. It was plus if you had two terms, it was, for example, second theory of stock. Three terms, third, and etc. up to five. But this is the AD and you see. In this graph, in this table, actually you see four columns. The first column shows the relative water, no, shows the parameter. The second column shows every parameter for shallow water and shallow water according to this table is between t between l over 20 and less than l over 20 or l over uh, 25 we can say and transitional water which d is between l over 20 and over 2 and deep water when d is greater than l over 2. Therefore, you see, if you compare, for example, let's see the first one. In the area, in shallow water, in deep water, in transitional water, we have the same formula. All of them is h over 2 times cosine theta. h over 2 at, for example, crest or toe, you see that this is half and half. This is similar. This is the symmetry. And it is the sine care. And what is cosine theta? Cosine theta depends on the location. At the center of coordinate, theta was 0 and goes pi over 2, pi over uh, pi, 3, 4, pi. Let me show you. Actually, theta, these values, that so here is 0, pi over 2, pi, 3, pi over 2, 2 pi, and here perhaps pi over 4, any value of that. Cosine of that, multiply the u marks or Give you the values or for eta or the profile. Therefore, cosine theta or sine theta has role in wave profile, wave velocity, and wave acceleration. Therefore, we were here. You see, I told you here by defining the shadow, we say d over l, d over l. But there is another, a little technical definition, kd, instead of d over l. What is that? If you said in this formula, cosine theta, 
Theta depends on two parameters. One of them is location, which is x. The other one is the time. What does it mean? If you are fixing yourself at the point x, you see by the time water goes up and goes down. Therefore, time is another parameter. We have two parameters, location and time. Let me show in the figure. If you are, there's one pile here and you are one platform here or pile, you are here. You don't move. What you see, the water level goes down, goes up, goes down, down, goes up. You say that X is not changed. What is changed? That is the time is changing. Because we have wavelength. We have wave period as well. If wavelength you mean consider 200 meters, perhaps from here to here, and then divide by here, you find the x, different angle, phase angles. And always for one day, two days, one year, I, you stay here. X didn't change. But why the water goes down or down? You mean you assume you are swimming at sea and you are swimming just here. You're going down, you're going up, down, up. What is the influential parameter? It's that time. One second here, after four seconds, you come two seconds, come here, after four seconds, come here, six seconds, and come here. If wave period is eight seconds, for example, you go here, you go up. You feel that. Therefore, <coughs> for defining every parameter, eta, the uh, uh, water surface profile or velocity or acceleration, we have two parameters, which they are x and t. And always we should normalize x, otherwise have unit here and it's not good and here. When you normalize, you compare with one and you go to radian. Here again, when you have x, you should compare that by L. Therefore, you multiply x by 2 pi over L. When you want, you're talking about time, you compare with period and multiply that by 2 pi over T. You know, you can understand what is K here. K, for example, is 2 pi over L. Is the wave number k? Okay, we will see later more. And wave celerity c equal l over t for shallow water is a square root of jd. For transitional is jt over two pi tan hyperbolic two pi d over l. Again, this is k. In some books, we didn't write two pi d over l. We say kd. And for water depth, we say C equals zero. For deep water, for deep water, always we use one index of zero. When we say C zero, it is celerity in at deep water. When we say L zero, it is wavelength at deep water, and so on. Therefore, you see that Velocity celerity is C0, which is L over T, it is G T over 2 pi. is different from the shallow water and different from transition. Be very careful here. In this equation, oh, next one, next one is better. And for L, when you have C, it's very easy to calculate L. Thus, L equals C times T. Therefore, from here, we can find L equals T times the square root of GD for this one. Therefore, L we have. In transition, again, L equals T times this one. We find here. 
be very careful here. When you calculate L at deep water, it's clear, L0 equal G T square over two pi, finished. At shallow water, again, L equals T times two T square of J G D. That's all. But here, you see that we have L here and L here. What is that? Here. L has a role of input, but here has a role of output. How we can calculate L? By try and error. You apply one value here, L, assume that you find one value. If they are equal, okay. But if not, again, you apply the font L here, find another value. And try, it's like a cycle iteration to arrive a point that input and output, they are the same. Okay, you say, I don't have idea, I don't know, I put 200 meters, 100 meters, one kilometer, I don't have idea, I am a strategist. Don't afraid and don't be panic. Therefore, you can easily calculate L0, G, T square over two pi, because T, you know, and the other can and apply first for the first estimation L0 here and find some value. And put the point value in the second cycle of trial and error here on the third one. Third one here, and then you arrive to a single value for input and output. That's all. Be careful, you should, in the exam, you should perhaps do that. In the previous examples, I remember some people didn't know this one, they had a little problem. Therefore, here the water, the wavelength is given, the group velocity is given. What is group velocity? When you calculated eta CL, you consider just one sign curve like this. That is not the case. One particle here, another particle, they are group of the waves come after the another one. Therefore, this group of waves reduce some values. We call Group velocity, uh, velocity, no, velocity, no, celerity, wrong here. The type wave celerity, this should be group celerity, not velocity. Group celerity, Cg, in the shallow water is equal C, no problem. In deep water, Cg is half of C. You see, effect. If it was gt square over 2 pi, this is gt. And sorry, again, as we say here, the reference book was not good. And s square here, we should have again. You know, t s square, not t. t s square over 4 pi. But what happened in the transitional water? In transition water, we say Cg equals a factor n times C. It's evident that n should be between one here and one over two, that's all. And then when you have n, you have these values and you calculate Cg. Water particle velocity, horizontal and vertical, U and W, for X direction, for Y direction, U and W. They have given here, here cosine theta, here cosine theta. Pay attention, we have here some cosine theta, which theta is for us, two pi x over L minus two pi T over T. 
but we have another cosine. This is cosine hyperbolic of some value. Cosine hyperbolic of some value. This cosine and this cosine are different. This is cosine hyper cosine normal cosine. This is cosine hyperbolic. This is theta, this is not theta. This x depend this theta depends on the x and time, x and t. The location on the surface or on the Cartesian coordinates and time. But here we have cosine hyperbolic, some other parameter that depends on the t, z, and d, z and d, and normalized by multiplying 2 pi over l. 2 pi over l, it was k for us, the wave number. Let's see, what does it mean? It means that when we calculated One thing without considering that one that was for surface or for Z0. Orbites here is big. When you go down, the orbites are smaller, 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 and then goes at the L over 2, 0. You know that. Okay. If we are talking about crest, we put Z equals H over 2, for example. Here Z0. Here Z minus over H over 2. Here z minus t. Here z perhaps we can say minus 10 meters. This it has another smaller orbit. And everywhere. Therefore, we apply those cosine hyperbolic for that one. Imagine that we have millions, millions, milliards, I don't know what the particles they are uh, rotating around their own orbit. At the surface, the biggest orbit, when you go to L over 2, this is zero orbit, a little upper that or above that, you have a small orbit and so on. Therefore, if the Z and L, B is given, and L we apply here, and here is for X and T, and we calculate everything. Don't worry if you get. It's very difficult. You can apply computer or calculator or you write a program. It's very nice. Again, second column for shallow water, third one for transitional water, and last one for deep water. For the other part, the parameters like, for example, water particle acceleration horizontal. Vertical, you have AX, AZ, AZ, I think I hope so, AZ, and etc. Don't forget, because acceleration is derivative of velocity, if we have here cosine, this is sine. If this is sine, this is minus cosine, and so on. Everywhere, here we have cosine, sine sine derivative of sine is minus cosine and the last one is that derivative of cosine is sine derivative of sine is minus cosine and so on and then water particle displacement horizontal and vertical we have formula Surface pressure, we have formula. Therefore, for general estimation, for general application, you may apply AD if you accept plus minus 5% approximation. Therefore, summary of linear AD wave theory, wave characteristic is given here. You can use this one as a reference for calculation of the parameters. I hope you understood that, you got the point. Therefore, let me a little compare and finish. You know, it's more than two hours that before recording the 
lecture. You are here. I am very thankful of you. Still full student at lecture. Thank you very much. I hope it's interesting for you. Remember, if you see the shape of airy weight theory, it's like sinusoidal shape. The stocks, as I mentioned, we have higher at crest to the sea level, higher value and lower value here. If it is h over 2, h over 2, this is more than h over 2, less than h over 2. We have some tables and graphs, we can calculate this one. And canoidal wave theory is like this. Hmm. Don't forget, for deep water, Stokes waves match very, very big condition. At least the condition that I was project manager, I was project engineering management, I was, for example, consultant in different projects, in Persian Gold. We saw that for deep water, this match very well. For general calculation for harbors, for even deep water, etc., you made this one, but you should find the bay theory. Canoidal and solitary wave has a shape like this. This matches very well for shallow waters. Wave profile shape of different Therefore, I stop you very tired. Next lecture, we continue from. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Now I start recording and see your questions without recording. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope you have energy to continue and ask me some questions. Jean-Pierre wrote, wrote, thank you, Prof. What does it mean? You don't have any question? Okay, let me stop the recording and I am with you. Thank you very much for your kind attention and participation.